Hey, what's going on? My name is Witness, and I'm here to talk about a CP Steel map review for Highlander. Uh, CP Steel is a map currently being played in RGL. It is a 5 CP stopwatch map. And after being asked by so many people to continue a series like this for more maps, I felt I should, you know, kind of contribute to the community and make some content. Um, so I think CP Steel might be a really good map for that. Um, quite, it's quite different from a lot of the other maps being played in RGL at the moment. Uh, for starters, it's a CP map. It's a non-traditional 5 CP map. And so the pacing of it and the overall feel will feel pretty different compared to something like uh, Payload or Koth. <laughs> in the sense that uh, the gameplay feels pretty mobile. There's a lot of rotating and you need some understanding of the map to play it well and kind of enjoy yourself. So I hope, I'm hoping this review can help some people find that joy and giving you some clear sense of direction can help clear up any misconceptions or overall lack of understanding of steel as a whole. So I'll just kind of start with holding A and run all the way through from holding A to holding all the points passed to then pushing A and all the points passed. So to start off Holding A is pretty much not something teams do very often, <laughs> um, since the the B hold and points after the B hold can really give you a much more consistent times overall. So you should really only just have a spy over on this point communicating what they see. Sometimes, if teams commit to A heavily, they might be prepping for an A to E push. And this is something that can be, be kind of called by your spy ahead of time. It can be a huge help for your team in the long run. Or you can also call if things try going drop down fast to just kind of uh, stifle that aggression very quickly. Um, just kind of going for drop down on the B. Uh, primarily on B, you want to have your heavy and soldier holding this upper staircase with a teleporter exit right behind them in this house. And you'll have a an entrance either on this medium health kit, or kind of behind the sentry gun, which will be probably right here. Uh, this is because if your team or your heavy and soldier get pressured off, you want to give them a pretty easy way to get back on and still kind of hold this little staircase area, which is really important. Um, your medic will be sitting right here with a dispenser just so they can tank your heavy and soldier as players fight them on the stairs and you'll have your demo and pyro playing right here on this corner your demo can stick up this area right here and this area right here to stop any kind of fast aggression and your pyro is here to also air blast players back into this corner um, your sniper will be playing up here on this roof and you'll primarily be watching this little crack shot right here you can see into the A spawn from right here and this is a very good sightline uh, for finding good picks early. If you get pressured off by demo from main, you can just kind of back up and play right here and still kind of watch this main choke. The main goal for playing so close to the choke with your beam take, taking players upper is to ensure that it's really difficult for classes to kill your heavy and soldier while your demo and pyro just kind of lock down this choke area. Uh, teams should very rarely if ever, you get to walk out of this choke without using, and your players in upper need to value their life extremely highly as well. Uh, and really make sure that your pyro and demo are, are very vigilant and ready to stuff play ubered players into this corner, pushing out of the choke with air blast and spam, just to ensure that they die very quickly with stickies being laid right under them, like right here and right here. And uh, while that's going on, just kind of make sure that like you know you have players fully fully healed and buffed right here so they don't die uh, post uber. Generally, if teams get control of upper and they coordinate aggression from upper and choke, this point gets very hard to defend due to you're taking damage like right here and right here, and you can't really deny all that. Uh, also, there might be a sniper right here, so backing up you might lose like some pretty important classes and you won't be able to hold the point. So try to make sure to. Uh, keep your players buffed. If there's things trying to fight upper, you're here healing your heavy and soldier. And you're just kind of keeping your pyro and demo alive too. If teams 
uh, kill your players in upper and you lose control and they try to drop down onto you, the same denial principle still kind of applies where your pyro can air bash players as they try to drop down while the rest of your team covers their only exit if they do drop down and right here which is only this doorway uh, oftentimes when teams go through the upper area for an uber push it's done kind of like as an all-in uh, hard commit fight since they can't kite very well if, it, if your team denies it well <coughs> and because they have to kite so far back it really does enable your team to just crush them as they're leaving um, if if uh, you deny the uber very well and they don't drop down or they get denied by like your pyro and they don't ever walk off the upper area your demo and soldier and sometimes your heavy if they don't kill a teleporter are very good at punishing players for doing this because all it really takes is your pyro to not allow them to walk off and your soldier just bombing right here and doing lots of damage to players in this tiny doorway and your demo can do the exact same thing and you can pretty much find a guaranteed two or three kills for people being caught in that tiny stairwell. Um, if you losing key classes like a demo, pyro, sniper, engineer, or any kind of like any combination of those four, um, on on B should pretty much kind of signal that you guys need to back up near your main or wishbone area, and your team should be ready to hold the point pretty passively. Playing pretty far back into a choke like this is difficult to hold, so if you find yourself stuck in this position, the best you can do is back up near your gun to prevent things from getting free peeks and spam upper. Um, so kind of what happens is you'll lose players right here, or you'll lose like a demo and pyro, or you lose like a sniper or NG, <laughs> and you'll want to kind of just kind of back up right here for a little bit, and then just kind of back up right here after you lose your gun or something. <coughs> um, once you get pushed back around your concrete area or kind of around your wishbone or main, if you're trying to repush on the point, you're really just kind of looking for picks onto really powerful offensive classes like like a demo or a heavy. Uh, killing a sniper is very good too. And you can slowly take ground across this point to try and reestablish some positioning and salvage it. Um, I would say if you, if you can find three or four kills backing up, that's a pretty good number to consider refighting. Uh, or you can just try and take a raw DM fight with f focus fire. Uh, both these ideas are pretty risky, but if you have some stronger classes alive and you can coordinate your aggression, you can salvage some beholds. And any time your team wins a refight, it's usually very, very good. And you can just kind of reset more of a passive hold and then reestablish, you know, um, a hold kind of similar to what you had set up before. If you need to leave, like, typically, you'll just want to have your combo lightly hang in around, like, concrete and spam the cap as they're backing up. Whenever you do need to leave, there are two options you can take. You can back out pretty cleanly through Wishbone, but it's pretty risky to try and cross from your spawn into Wishbone, so, um... Keep your positioning in mind. That's what I mean, like if you're like playing medic right here, you don't want to cross this as you're being capped because this is a pretty long walk. You might get caught by spam. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is once B is capped, you start spawning on the C side of the map, and you can back spawn to avoid being caught in spam sight lines. Typically, <laughs> it's better to have your medic ready to back spawn and meet up with your team on C or in Wishbone to avoid any pinches through E as you're backing up. Um, but if your flank does a good job of living and denying threats, it's usually safe to back up through here, and you can play pretty aggressive in Wishbone early. If you choose the back spawn, you won't lose any uber percentage unless you change many guns. If at any point your flank goes down, or teams are threatening you with, with decent E pressure, you might need to send a few classes back to clean up cappers, typically. Your flank classes can do a pretty good job of keeping the point clear, but if you need to send more classes back to deal with their entire team, or if they got a lot of cap time, rotating back to a passive b-hole and having your demo pyro kind of spam point right here is pretty good from Wishbone. Um, just kind of in exchange though, doing this, you know, you're, you're focusing your 
your scorch shot and your stickies and pipes on this point. So you're kind of forfeiting a really good bee hole. Um, so just kind of make sure like your scout and spy are calling things in lobby and you're trying to best to stay alive. And they're communicating if classes are flooding in and trying to get on B very quickly. Uh, if your soldier needs to rotate, your soldier can kind of jump here and spam rockets. And that might get the job done. Or he can rotate back through spawn. Right here. And just kind of get on here and start spamming rockets right here. And usually kind of back, back after those people cut off point, you can rotate back. Um... <laughs> In general, a lot of the map opens up for offense post B cap, and because of this, it's pretty normal for points following C defense to be kind of the points where um, teams collapse and lose because there's just typically a lack of proper rotation or reaction to what's going on kind of around the cent central and E point nexus. Um, in regards to C, uh, holding Wishbone. Right here, our main is pretty important. It's essentially just kind of keeping your demo sniper and pyro alive and not allowing any free entry right here. Um, and you just don't want teams to group up and lock your combo out of pressuring E. Uh, your soldier should probably be playing up here by the slow door area. And he's just kind of rotating for buffs and making sure that he's calling if there's classes trying to push here. Um, just so you can avoid getting caught in a pinch right here. Um, if your soldier dies up here, your combo should kind of back up onto C itself. And, um, this hold is pretty easy. Just having your demo just kind of lock out this door right here. Your medic will kind of be lingering around spawn, sliding buffs to your heavy. We'll be playing kind of right here on the top top kit and your sniper who will be play, typically playing like right here kind of watching slow door on wishbone doors and your heavy just kind of denies any overextenders from you know wishbone right here or slow door or wishbone or you kind of playing back and watching like flanks on your medic through a uh, death hallway you always kind of keep that in mind when you're playing heavy uh, oftentimes while you're passive on C and you're pushed out of main or wishbone teams will be trying to overwhelm your NG and flank to work on the E cap. Uh, oftentimes you'll find that you'll have your NG built up here in heaven and they'll be trying to spam your gun either across the lobby or what have you. Um, so really what happens is while that's going on they're trying to pressure E You'll have your flank kind of just working to deny that. Um, if your flank is strong and can kind of contest the lockdown um, of E on their own, there's some merit to considering keeping your gun on C, but it's pretty playstyle dependent, and for the most part, I think most teams are better off just leaving their gun kind of right here around heaven and having their flank kind of play engineer guard duty and trying their best to deny and just call if there's a lot of pressure if you're playing passive on C. If your flank dies and you lose, you know, your NG and or your flank, your combo is going to have to start to rotate from C to contest E. Typically, you want to leave your heavy behind on this top left kit to just kind of watch C and make sure that nothing really gets on C while your combo is rotating away. Um... If you don't have enough information, or I'm sorry, if you do have enough information, your sniper can stay and watch the slow door exit as well. This kind of right here. But typically, just kind of rotating your demo and sniper. Sometimes just your demo is fine right through C spawn. To contest players is good enough. Just kind of be a bit cautious of, of any classes that might be, you know, trapping up this door right here. Or watching it from, like, upper right here. Um... And they're trying to spam you as you rotate. Um, you might expect like a like a soldier sitting up here spamming down on you, or a heavy might be up here if they're very hard committing, or a demo might be sticking your spawn from right here. You just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, as you get through the shutter right here and start holding around heaven, you're just probably gonna be spamming to clear point and clearing cappers um, until you can 
get your flank and energy back up, and then you'll, you'll rotate very quickly back to see. Uh, what's in, like gonna happen over time is your flank's gonna need help to die in gap uh, once teams start to get more established holds, holds and wishbone. So just kind of make sure your demo is listening to calls uh, and rotating to stop E whenever you can. Uh, at one point, though, you might be too slow to come back, and it'll flood in and start to get a lot of cap time on C. Um, but just kind of make sure, like, you're listening to calls on demo, and you're alive to rotate through C spawn is pretty valuable. Because uh, slowing, slowing the cap down helps, and killing the cap cappers outright helps, so it's kind of smart to rotate AS ASAP to help your team on C. If at any point your spy or flank communicates that they're full rotating their combo over to E and you're trying to establish a hole directly across point you kind of want to make sure you're, you're rotating more and more classes over to C and meet them and deny E. You'll kind of want to make sure that you're having one class still kind of watching and as you send more and more players back to contest so I recommend that having your heavy be the very last thing to leave C while your team rotates until you're absolutely sure that capping E is their only out uh, like of winning should be like kind of in the back of your head. Oftentimes though, once teams can bait a full commit onto E from your combo, or sometimes not even a full commit, sometimes you'll just have uh, teams come through while your demo goes away because your demo can't really make it back all the way and deny the door at the same time. So it'll just kind of flood in while you're rotating, take the point, and then work to lock you out. Uh, it's kind of hard when teams beat you on the rotation and start finding kills especially if they have uber so it's kinda risky to even consider fighting C if there's a large uber like if there's a large number of players on point and ubers are even if you wanted to try and fight C you would kinda need to have uber add and your players can are ready to get in overwhelmed C with numbers and uber add uh, typically if teams get into C fast you start bleeding a lot of players or their combo beats you on a rotation and is already knocking you out of C. It's a pretty smart move to just kind of leave this early and rotate your combo over into locker room, white room, uh, lobby area, etc. and just kind of be ready to hold D and E. Uh, once you've meet some of the criteria, you know, of pulling out of a C hold, what you know is if they get in like fast from like B or if you start losing players, or if their combo beats you on a rotation and locks you out and you can't really fight back as, as effectively uh... you, you want to make sure you're, you're in lobby um... just kind of be aware if teams hold like a really large player ad or uber ad they will try to go through death hallway and it's called death hallway because getting caught in here on offense essentially means you're dead <laughs> um, if they're too slow to push through death hallway your your heavy spam classes like a soldier or demo or even a sniper can catch them right here and you can find some pretty easy picks sometimes even a med drop or like a force and that can really really mess up uh, offensive rolls um, and it's just kinda the same idea as like a stuffing effect you'll you'll stop that momentum and you'll be able to kind of reset your hold and lobby pretty free even though you messed up on C by getting wiped <coughs> making sure that your combo has control of lobby is probably the most pivotal and key thing for drawing out really long times on steel post B um, the reason being you have pretty easy mobility for your combo to fight both the D and E at the same time so essentially, you want to have your demo, medic, sniper, pyro, and heavy all kind of bunkered down in the lobby as quick as you can and ready to, to like deny any pressure on E if you know their combo isn't going from death hallway. It's pretty a, much a given that teams can't get from D to C without going through death hallway. Um, so you're going to want to have your demo be tanked and ready to stick up doors leading into lobby from E and A, re like, respectively, so you, like, sticks right here, sticks, you know, somewhere right here, just to make sure, like, they can't, like, get on you quick if you don't see them coming. Uh, 
one thing to note about this lobby area, it's a pretty spy rich environment. There's a lot of different railings, edges, um, and corners for spies to just kind of chill and hang out on. So making sure like your demo, or sorry, your, your pyro and heavy are pretty spy aware and just doing a really good job of being like spy checking is super important. Um, the enemy sniper you can also see a pretty tight angle down to lobby from this window right here. Um, so you gotta make sure if you're playing medic you're not standing in one of these sight lines so you don't get sniped. Pretty important. Um, really, I mean your demo can spam out any class that's trying to harass uh, your combo and window with stickies. Uh, once your sniper is dead, or not watching the doorway leading leading from lobby into E, it's pretty safe for him to get pretty aggressive and spam doorways and wishbone or players trying to pressure E is kind of right here. Like pipes are very good, uh, just kind of right here. Or sticky is just kind of right here. Pressuring E is very good if you know there's not a sniper watching you from here at Wishbone. Um, it's okay to play further back in the lobby area, kind of with the rest of your combo, if you can't get close enough to spam, just to avoid being sniped. Though typically, like you'll have your heavy kind of playing right here on this line with your pyro and medic kind of behind the cart right here, providing heal for everyone. Um, and your sniper has some pretty solid sight lines into main wishbone from lobby and D. So trying to establish a, a sight line here can be very pow powerful. As it's really hard for teams to like spam them out. And it's basically free kills for any class that's peaks too wide into E. So just kind of make sure you're communicating and keeping tabs on where, where the combo is going. As this is kind of very important and very helpful for your sniper's positioning. Keep in mind you can see them through this window. And your spy should also kind of be posted up in Wishbone and kind of outside B as well to call that. Um, your sniper can play wide in lobby right here. It's kind of hard scoped and being tanked. And you can punish anything that tries to spam your gun or team from Wishbone or main. Uh, if you don't want to play there, you can play from the window in D. Um, or you can play in heaven and try to SVS. Uh, this little sight line is pretty good too. And you can play it right here and try to SVS the sniper in window. Um, SVSing is pretty risky if you aren't aware where the sniper is. Uh, so just gotta make sure your positioning is pretty appropriate. Because you have a nice ability to pick off players in doorways like Wishbone. And you uh, have just like so much stopping power and denying like things spamming the gun for free. Whereas your demo might need to peek a bit more. Uh, so just kind of try to abuse your your positioning in class to the to the maximum. If teams start getting a lot of picks on you, and they try walking across E on this left side to meet your combo in lobby, it's pretty much going to be on your sniper demo and pyro playing around this doorway to make the walk as painful as possible <laughs> for them. Uh, just kind of be mindful their sniper might be posted up right here watching this doorway. Uh, your demo can spam like right here from inside lobby onto your combo pretty free like this is relatively safe for the most part um you can use this use this angle pretty aggressively if your combo decides to post up on point this angle right here is pretty good if they post up on point as well um so just kind of keep that in mind if you do that it's pretty nice um most teams might try to walk out of wishbone with their picks and start pressuring e and if they do that, there's a few different ways you can beat this. And this this happens a lot of matches where teams will just walk out. Because after you cap C, the bridge will come out. And they'll just walk out and get on the point right here. Um, one way is you can use on your demo through lobby right here. And just kind of play, play for like an uber trade right here as they use on point. Um, and you just kind of back up and play for a post uber situation in lobby. Uh, or you can have your demo and medic rotate through D and spam through the window if you're down a lot of players. Um, this rotation can sometimes catch players off guard, uh, but it's also a very slow rotation, so each method does have its own like strengths and weaknesses. Um, you just gotta be aware of what might work for you and when it's appropriate to do each one. 
for the most part, I think taking the exchange on your demo right here and just kind of spamming point the best you can is probably the best thing you can do. It's kind of be aware of spies hanging out in this corner right here as you peek. It's a pretty common spy decloak spot. Um, your flank for the most part will be playing uh, engineer tower defense kind of over near heaven. You'll primarily want to make sure you're kind of watching for any classes that might try and bomb from lower uh, spies trying to get onto your end of your gun from like the little hallway inside your your, your C spawn. I'll try to get over there quick and show you. So we're just kind of playing engineer tower defense. I got this little bomb right here is pretty common. With a spy, sometimes decloaking either right here, getting on your getting on your gun or NG as a soldier bombs. Uh, flankers or combos trying to run through just death hallway down onto D for a DC connector push. Your spy should be calling that though if it's that, that's the case. And it's very important to make sure your engineer lives and keeps his gun up for a majority of this defense to deny any players trying to push across C or into lobby, or just cap B outright. As long as D isn't capped, you can still go in here and grab the supply locker. Um, but if you lose D, your flank needs to be a bit more sustainable and prioritize living even more around your NG. So I'd recommend your soldier can try running battalions or a conch along with black box to find a bit more um, uh, HP in these gritty team fights if you can't constantly resub. Um, oftentimes, teams might have already rotated from B side onto A and are trying to work their way into lobby. Your spy should have a position either in or around wishbone or main leading back out into B, as I mentioned earlier, so they can call where their combo is rotating over to A as quickly as possible. It's a pretty slow rotation, but it's really often that you'll see teams not spot it or recognize what's going on. <laughs> And they'll just get completely off guard by teams rolling through A and getting through doors for free and just using. So it'll really just kind of be on your demo and pyro to lock up this choke right here. Um, with hard spam and air blasts to force to use as early as possible. Whenever a team pops, it's usually best to kite back towards D and repop with a solo on your demo. Uh, you can get your pyro in here too in the uber to lock players into the corner right here and your heavy should just kind of echo with your medic and pyro and again you're just being spy aware and flank aware and denying spies that might be right back right there be on the health kit be in the little elbow dropping down right here or right here and you're just kind of making sure nothing gets on your med while you kite or post uber um oftentimes Teams will overcommit and flash a lot of players in, trying to fight through the hard spam prepping for demo on this little doorway and lockers. So kiting and using while forward to trap off their exit back into A can be very rewarding, but I would not push past this line. As they put some stickies right here at the most. And if they get past you right here, I would not overcommit because you can get caught by spam or some random for a random spy, a lot can happen. It's very risky. I would not recommend dying trying to chase frags post super. If you end up losing a lot of players and their team starts to split uh, capping between two points at once, this can be like C and E or D and E. It's really kind of going to be on, on like your team or main caller to establish a plan to kind of deal with either flank who is presumably also capping E or fight the enemy combo capping D, C, whatever. Um, context plays a pretty big role in a choice like this, but oftentimes it's okay to try and fight their combo on on C or D, and then rotate your spam over to E once you kill those players if your flank needs the help. Um, but sometimes though, if you want to rotate, you can. If your team needs to stop E because it has a lot of cap time. That's, that's a good reason to stop the cap first and then deal with the combo capping a, a point like C or, C or D. Uh, typically, teams that lose lobby on defense struggle very badly to retake it. And they lose up, lose the, the whole round entirely. Um, and that, I would say, like, losing lobby on defense kind of marks, like, 
the end of that round unless something goes horribly wrong for the offense and they lose like all nine other players very quickly and they haven't capped D yet. Um, you can still scrap together a pretty passive hold and disconnector right here. Uh, wishbone, this little window, and heaven. And you can try to like squeeze some seconds off the clock. Typically, after combos push you out of lobby, they'll try to push further onto D and cap D, and then they'll just try to push over onto heaven right here. Um, and it'll just kind of box out your options for pushing back onto E. So, the very best thing you can do as a team is just rotate back into Wishbone as you spawn or, or, or lose, lose this ground and just spam point and rush point with your bodies to find some way of pushing people off. Your pyro can do it. You can send your soldier and demo lower right here to spam the point. It's kind of an alternate angle, but I said at this point, you know, it's kind of garbage time. You're just playing to like squeeze seconds out of the stopwatch. Um, and every second does count on stopwatch, so just make sure you're working as a team to squeeze out some extra time off, like kind of off the clock before the round ends. And I can kind of start talking about offense too, but just kind of in general on steel. Having a plan is so important. Keeping your comms clear is so vital. Um, it can really enable you to pull off big upsets against teams that might not be as prepared as you. Um, <laughs> pushing A, I would expect very little resistance. There might be some sticky traps like right here or like right here. There might be a spy somewhere. So really you just kind of want to send like your scout NG soldier and maybe your pyro to kind of look for spy very aggressively. Um, and that's basically just kind of deny any information so they're blind. Um, and they don't know if you're going to commit hard on the E or not from A. Typically you won't. But finding that kill is very valuable regardless. And simultaneously while that's going on, your team will work pushing B. While your team is working the cap A, you can be booting up uh, while A is being capped. <laughs> uh, the best way to do this is to just kind of like start getting ready to establish yourself in the main choke area. Um, <laughs> and you can check for anything that might be hiding forward, spamming things back. You can have like an engineer build a level 3 right here and you can just kind of wrangle it and spam things right here. You can have like a hit scan class, or not hit scan, a, like, like, a, like a soldier or, or a demo. Just kind of shoot this little uh, shutter area right here and look for stickies that are hiding right here. You can have your heavy kind of walk through and look for anything that might be hiding or traps kind of right here. Or traps on the kit, traps on the light. Uh, any kind of traps right here in the, in the stairwell. With the Fist of Steel, you can spot the sniper up here. Your sniper can go for a quick little play trying to find their sniper on the stairs right here. Usually if you die in like the first 15, 20 seconds, it doesn't really matter anyway. It's kind of like a sack. But for the most part, it's kind of difficult to deal with the guy up there. You just got to take a buff and try your best. Um, <coughs> most of the time though, like... Um, walking out of this little, little uh, choke area... Hugging the right wall right here does a pretty good job of neutralizing the majority of the, like the crack shot, and might save you from eating a 150. After you kind of get some ground in your own choke, <laughs> you're gonna want to make sure that your heavy and soldier, and maybe your scout too. Like I say, getting your scout in here is not a bad idea. Uh, you just kind of want them to work this stairwell with your medic, giving them a lot of heals. While your pyro and demo just kind of be passive and watch this little main area and make sure nothing rushes, like comes through for free and just kills everyone here. Uh, typically, you want to make sure your heavy soldier and maybe scout are fully buffed while trying to fight the heavy and soldier up here. The primary role of these classes on the stairs is to push these classes out and then. They killed a telly. Once you do that, that's it. That's 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 your job. You're done. <laughs> and then it goes on to your 
demo primarily in main. But this is to make sure that your sniper has a place to go post super and playing the post super correctly on on B is super vital. Uh, I would say more so in Highlander too. Like this is a Highlander playing post supers and knowing how to play around post supers is so important. So uh, I, this is a very good point to work on that and kind of understand like how to build up situations where you always have good post super pushes. Um, you basically want to make sure you're ready for a push with your demo, medic, and spy. Your spy needs to be communicating when they're able to get in and sap the gun so your medic can take a solo on your demo through this choke area. The primary goal in this initial push is you're trying to do two things. You're trying to get this gun down as quick as you can while also trying to force the other medic to use Uber. Once you get the force, just back up in the choke, live, heal everyone up as Uber fades, and then as a team, you need to be very quick, very explosive, getting through this choke with your scout, pyro, demo, and medic. You can have your scout run up here, and you're just flooding in as many angles as possible, and as many players as possible. You have like, your demo and medic and pyro walking up the yard. You have your soldier and heavy, you know, playing up here. Your sniper, you know, your sniper walking up here, getting ready to peek. Your soldier and heavy, kind of bodyguarding him. Um, you just want to flood in with as many classes as possible, pushing all these different angles, and you're trying to overwhelm the defense and you're working your way up to pressure them back into their spawn or wishbone. So it's very, very, very bad. If you lose any players in the Uber, because then you can't like have all the pressure you could have had if they just lived in the first place. Well, so listen to your main caller. Don't get to end, don't take any fights you can easily just run away from <laughs> uh, before the push. And just wait until your team is ready to fully commit as a unit into the defense. As you work up into this yard as a pyro and demo, you really kind of need to make sure that you establish who's going to protect your sniper up here. Uh, the last thing you want to do is a soldier to bomb high and just kill him. And then you just have like a soldier spamming you. Typically, I think it's good to have your heavy just kind of sit on your sniper and play up here while your soldier walks down. And your soldier can play right up here, or right here. And as your team walks up, you can, you can just high bomb people. And you usually you want to like, you can high bomb from like right here, or right here on the roof. And you can just high bomb, and you can get on people on their on their concrete. Um, if t and that's usually like what you do to people if they refuse to decommit, or if they're leaving very slowly. A bomb onto them, backing up onto concrete, it will convince them very quickly that they need to leave because they are very hurt and if they stay in they will die. <laughs> um, and it's a good way to punish people from playing from a, from a poor position from a defensive standpoint. Uh, after you establish some semblance of a presence on B, you really kind of want to make sure your demo and soldiers spam and lock out these doors just kind of neutralize any chance of them pushing back out uh, make sure you're kind of watching this drop down area this window and this window sometimes you might see like a demo or a soldier or a sniper or some random class just sitting up here waiting uh, so make sure someone checks this and you're kind of watching it and if you can find someone back here it's just kind of a free kill and make sure to push on to see that much easier um, so, kind of pushing on to C, after you take B and you are very confident that they can't repush, you need to make a conscious decision as a team. This is where the main, like, having a plan and sticking to it and listening to each other is very important on this map. Um, you need to make the choice to roll on to C as fast as you can or set up for an ECAP. If you roll them with just like a like a B push, like if you kill four or five players, or you kill a lot of their core classes, you should very quickly push up through main wishbone as a team, 
and start to just lock up C and cap C. So that can be like your demo, jumping through, landing right here, putting sticks like right here, deny this, putting sticks right here to deny this, and you're just kind of watching, you're playing on point, and you're making sure that nothing gets through that spawn door onto you guys. Um, if you cannot go that fast, you can work your way into main, just like playing on your sniper in this tight, long hallway. This is sightlines absurd. You're just tanking your sniper. He's looking for picks, looking to win an SVS, looking to find any kills he can on players just lingering in the sightline. Uh, if their combo is playing scared or your sniper is struggling to find picks or he can't win the SVS, um, you can send your combo through the slow door right here. And if you're not called, I'm going to use my cheat codes. And remove. Bang. There it goes. Like one door. Can't cross that. Whoa. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> typically, you can solo on your demo or heavy right here and just kind of like do a million damage. Or, or you can go quick. Have your demo stick this off right here and just quickly, very quickly, climb onto C and trap them in their own wishbone and make them like have to come into you. And you have really good positioning, you have good spam, and you're being healed. Um, if you go fast, you, you know, you just gotta make sure that you're going as fast as you can through this main area to get control of high ground on the C point. And your demo just needs to lock out their spawn while the rest of your team and combo cap C with your flank still trying to pressure E best they can. If you don't kill a lot of people or you lose a lot of players in the fight on B and have to play slow, you know, getting your combo into into main or wishbone here and having helping like get this gun down right here while your flank captures E is very good. Uh, it, it forces a rotation. You can have your soldier run pain train, you can have your pyre run detonator, jump on the point. Anything that makes sure you have at least times two on point is so important on this map. Um, ultimately, you just want to make sure you see about shifting their combo back one by one to fight you over on, on E. And as soon as you see that, you're just busting ass right through Wishbone onto C. Um, sometimes, if you get a lot of cap time on C, and can establish good positioning over here on heaven and just kind of punish people right here so they like your demo can kind of play like right here or up on heaven while you're like you have players capping and you have someone watching lower if you get a lot of cap time you can commit this way and if they just kind of neglect not rotating they'll just lose the game outright which is perfectly fine because that just means you win faster um you, you love that <laughs> um just kind of make sure your spy is calming everything that they're seeing <coughs> and you're keeping, you know, comms nice and clear. Uh, sending your sniper into Indy's windows uh, back on A to find a pick onto the sentry or the NG is super good because it opens up the point more for your flank. Um, really driving home that this gun needs to die right here as quickly as possible. So kind of coordinating with your team to get this NG down, super important. Uh, your spy can decloak right here and sap the gun while your soldier comes on. You can, you know, decloak right here. You can have your soldier try and come in from lower and spam the gun right here. You know, there's a, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Just getting the gun down is so important to pressuring this cap. Otherwise, you'll just kind of jump on and get shot right off right away. So make sure you keep that in mind uh, as a team. Uh, and your scout, you know, uh, while you do that sap play, uh, <coughs> your scout can play like kind of on the point. And just kind of help clean up and shoot things while your team just kind of claps it. While your flank's collapsing on this corner right here. Um, again, though, like, as soon as your flank or your spy sees their combo or demo rotating away from C, you need to be quick. Like, you need to be rotating, and you need to cut them off, like, right here and right here. Um, if you kill a lot of players while pressuring E, sometimes just going for an exchange on C and hitting your Uber right here on the high ground is good enough. Um, so if we're just kind of sitting up in this wishbone area and you're spamming and you kill like their scout and their soldier and their NG and their spy feeds, you know, that's four players down and you're playing a 5v9, you can just kind of take an exchange right here through 
and you're just kind of using and you're flooding in like right here trying to get on you can send some classes kind of right through this, this like little ramp area and playing right here and you're just trying to exchange and any trade you get will strictly favor you guys because on defense you know if you die the respawn time is very long versus the ones on yours which is not um, so just kind of always be aware of your picks and always be ready to exchange on C if you get a lot of kills or just random picks that go your way. <coughs> um, if you wanted to do some spice, this is kind of a fun little thing you can do. Um, first of all, you should learn this jump right here. The fastest way into Wishbone is on this lip. So after you cap C, you know, this little, this little jump right here, pretty good. It's much faster than, you know, doing, doing that. So learn, learn this lip jump on every class. Every class can do it. It's very valuable. But if your flank can get through uh, A very quickly, you can sometimes set up a sentry gun or <laughs> right here in Wishbone or on C and just kind of catch their combo as they back up. Um, your flank can catch people here too. This kind of experiment, and if your flank can get through on offense early while you're pushing B and get, get, get killed like a medic leaving right here early, that's a very good play. Just kind of keep your heads up and look for new ideas to experiment with. Whenever you're pushing D and E, it's pretty vital to keep your comps clear again and just be aware of how many kills you have by hitting tab. Um, you need to keep track of your E pressure. You need to cap she to make sure your team has a clear like idea of what to do after the cap you know pretty similar to be keeping an explosive transition from point to point in the vitamin push uh, might be better than, than playing slow if you have a large player add the vitamin push is just you know vitamin a b c d e um <laughs> if you do find yourself in a position in a post uber fight where you have a lot of kills or a decent number um like just like a decent number ad rolling through death hallway very quickly can be a very strong audible play if you are aware of your numbers ad you just got to make sure you have like a heavy watching for hiders in this corner or a demo sticking up these these uh, shutter doors um you just gotta make sure you have, you have classes watching these random corners or people coming out of shutters so you're like you don't get forced or caught by heavy spam um <coughs> realistically going through death hallway fast on the d is rare in most match situations and i would say even scream situations too it's an okay thing to keep in mind but for the most part <coughs> more often than not you will find yourself posted back up in wishbone with your combo just trying to chilling in here and your flank tries to pressure E best they can uh, just kind of chilling in wishbone for a few seconds your sniper should be kind of hard scoped watching this right here peeking in the lobby and you're just trying to work picks while your demo kind of spams classes also peeking out of lobby your spams classes trying to contest right here just gotta watch you don't want to peek right here because you're in two sight lines you're right there and right there so maybe it's kind of let your sniper do his thing and watching this is pretty valuable. Um, if you can find picks onto key classes or rotating back really quick and your pyro, demo, or sniper are down, kind of immediately taking this left side and using heavy spam from like your demo to push teams back into the lobby or lock them out from a kick for like lock them out from contesting the point is very good. Um, if you're not doing that, that, that kind of working off two, two or four picks though, you can kind of just wait for like maybe 30, 20 or 30 seconds for your sniper to like find a pick to work off of. If your sniper dies or you can't find anything kind of quickly, you should just kind of rotate. And this is a very long rotation, but you just kind of walk your combo very quickly back through uh, B onto A. And it's very slow, but it, it works very well but you want to meet their combo in lobby um, and you just want to get here as fast as you can 
<clears throat> what, what kind of follows this rotation is a very, very difficult Uber exchange in lockers leading into lobby. Um, initially, like, have someone check for sticks, like, you know, right here, right here, on, on this, watch for, like, a soldier hiding, like, right up here. Hold on. It, there we go. Yeah, soldiers, soldiers can hide right up here, so yeah, just kind of check this. If you're looking for sticks, you'll find him. We'll just kind of, you know, check it real quick and back up. Um, your spy should kind of be in lobby, calling to see how close they are and spotting things like that anyway for your team. Uh, if their combo is pretty passive and they're not watching this door closely, the Uber exchange gets very, very easy because you're allowed to walk a lot deeper without worry beating a lot of damage from their demo who should have been watching this doorway. Uh, you need gonna like for this exchange. It's gonna be only your demo. Your your demo is so important on this exchange. So like, I would say if you're not playing like demo or medic, you are sitting <coughs> right out here, and you're not taking any damage, and you are ready to be crit healed and buffed all the way. And you're ready to get in and fight as fast as possible. Getting through fast post is so important because their demo probably used all his ammo trying to juggle your demo. And he has no stickies. So he didn't, like getting through here and spreading out and just like doing a lot of damage and bum rushing their combo is super good. And it can be the nail in the coffin if you're fully buffed. Pyro and Heavy get through here and start like going to town on, on their combo. Um, so it is kind of similar before, like on B, where you kind of flood in and push your ankles. You're going to flood in, push lobby, spread out, and focus down their combo. Um, and your, your demo's primary goal here will be to get through and for force them and back up. And just, you're trying to do as much damage as possible, make them flash as much as possible, because it's a solo. The more you make, the more you make them flash, the better your Uber will be post. And you might be able to have a few seconds to where you can just kind of sticky them off and find a few kills if they aren't flashing. Um, as you push your combo out of lobby, you're going to want to have your demo spam the sentry up in heaven, just from like right here. Um, and your heavy and pyro can kind of hold down lobby, and you're just kind of more spy aware, your sniper can play up here in windows and have an amazing sight line or play down here and have a good sight line um, and you're basically just kind of working to, to enable your combo to start pressuring E as quickly as possible um, so if you're if you're playing and you pushed your combo back onto D just kind of outright and you put your combo right here you're kind of shifting the rules of, of like in engagement in terms of offense and defense um, because now you know exactly where they are. They are right here. Or right here. Or right here. They're all in front of you. Um, so your all your damage can be focused into this connector, window, C-spawn, etc. Um, oftentimes, though, getting like a power class, like a heavy or soldier up here, is super, super powerful and hard to deal with. And you do a lot of damage and deny a lot of space to people trying to push your, com your team up here. Um... Because you have like this damage coming in from right here, and your demo is spamming from either on point or way back here, or you know, anywhere really. Um, so, to kind of be on your spy to call wherever their combo is pushing from if, they, if they're not committing right away here. So, if they try to like rotate all the way back into Wishbone, your spy might want to like, keep an eye on that and just let your team know they're rotating so you can rotate your eyes and kind of spam here. If there's a class slower, you can have like a heavy drop down on their head and just kind of kill them right away. Um, if they wipe and lobby, really kind of make sure that your combo is quick and in getting into D and starting the cap while your flank works E. Typically, splitting your cap like this and kind of splitting the map in half will give you a very good position to win outright once you cap D. Because once you cap D, uh, this spawn will no longer be accessible to the defense and they'll be forced to either fight you from their from the, like this D point from lower or wishbone um, And it's it, it's like less doors to watch so it's a lot easier to clean up rounds um, 
you know, usually like you can have your demo and medic is going to be tanked, kind of playing on point on the bridge, rotating spam wherever it needs to go. You can have your heavy playing up in heaven right here, stuffing this pretty easily. You got to watch the sniper peek in this though, but you're pretty safe if you <laughs> stay like right here. And just watch and call for spam. If there's a class slower, I said earlier, you can just kind of drop down. You can play on point. Your spy should be just kind of be roach like calling where they are. You maybe just kind of watching wishbone. If nothing goes here, you can just kind of get on on them as they try to spam you. Um, so for the most part, that's really about it. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention though, just just kind of making sure that you're checking cheeky spots. This is a pretty pretty old spot, so I don't know if a lot of new players know this, but you can actually get up on this little lamp post and this little lamp post right here. So whenever you're checking for sacks or stickies, making sure like you have someone check this is pretty good so nothing dies quickly. And you can check that up there too. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, I'm so rusty. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, let's see what I can do. I am not a, uh, I'm not a soldier main, as you can tell. Scout main, heavy main, trying to, trying to do rocket jumps. There you go. After like five, you have, a soldier can stay up here, or a demo. So just kind of making sure like you're looking up really quickly for stuff like that might be beneficial. I have not seen it done in a while, but kind of giving it like a, like a quick check might be beneficial, just to kind of watch and avoid any. Uh, Cheeky, cheeky sack plays. I hope this video helped. If you had any questions, feel free to add me on Steam or message me on Discord. Uh, my Discord is uh, in the description as well as my Steam. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.